Yo, this is David Sanchez from Havoc, and I'm blowing it up with the mighty Z on Capital Chaos TV. All right, this is uh, Todd Owens with Capital Chaos TV, and we're here tonight at the Oakland Metro with uh, Dave from uh, Havoc. How are you doing tonight, Dave? Doing fantastic. Stoked to be here. Awesome. Thanks for uh, taking the time to be with us. Uh, first off, I guess we're on this tour. You got a little headlining joint. Well, not a little one. It's a pretty good size uh, little joint you guys are doing with a bunch of bands. So maybe talk a little about the tour and how it's going a couple weeks in. Yeah, we're a couple weeks in right now. We've had some vehicle issues, so that's why I'm especially stoked to be here today. But uh, the tour is really, really cool. This is the first time we've ever gotten to go out as a headliner and choose, handpick all the bands that we're out with. On this run, we've got Psychosomatic, uh, Witch Haven, Black Breath, Extinction AD, and Black Fast. All those bands we're fans of, and they're all really, really sick live bands. So we're very stoked to have them all out on the road with us. Sweet. That was uh, one question I like to ask about your influence in choosing the bands, but you just answered it. You picked all these bands, so obviously yeah. uh, this is the first nice. Time. Nice variety of bands. First time we've ever gotten to actually choose them all, so we're all... And kind of splitting it up. Certain bands are on certain dates, and then towards the end of the tour, you got other guys coming on. When these guys are, Some of these guys are jumping off, I think. Yeah, yeah. Psychosomatic, this is their last day with us, and this is our first day with Witch Haven and Black Breath. And, uh, you know, we're doing kind of regional thing where, you know, we're getting different bands for different uh, parts of the country. Yep. Uh, and then uh, any other tour plans after this, or are you guys going to take a break and work on writing or what's going on what's next in uh, the Habit Camp when uh, this trip is over we're actually going out with Battle Cross and uh, Black Fast and Necro Goblicon that should be pretty cool that should be happening in um, middle of December we're going out for like a week or so with them and then we're going to wrap up the year and complete the writing of our new album and start recording early next year alright so yeah it's been uh, I guess two years I guess since the last album yeah, two years at this point. It'll be three by the time the, act the thing actually comes out. And you guys, uh, first three releases were on Candlelight, and now I guess you're with Century Media. So let's change changing record labels, and what's what's that about? Um, well, we were you know contractually obligated to three records with Candlelight, and we put out three, so it was time for a change. And uh, we shopped our stuff to some labels, and we wound up going with Century Media. They're a good label. They've got a really good roster and history, so we're stoked to be there. Good metal label. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's yeah, what's the status? You've written the new album and you just got to record it? Are you still writing? Um, I would say about 90% of the record is written. So we've got the majority of it already down. It's a matter of writing a few more lyrics, um, sprucing up a, a couple parts here and there. But for the most part, it's all done, and it's sounding real, real nice. Super dark and heavy and dynamic and evil. What's uh, the writing style for you guys? Do you write a lot of this stuff and then bring those guys in? Or everybody writes collect collaboratively? Or? Um, it depends. Sometimes it's totally collaborative where everyone's kind of thrown in their two cents. And sometimes I'll have like a real strong idea of how I want the drums and bass to go and things like that. So um, I don't know. It varies. It depends on the song that you're listening to, which, which one was written by who and how it was arranged. So you encourage the other guys to bring stuff in, and then you kind of yeah. sign off if it's yeah. Havoc approval. Yeah. Havoc. That's yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> um, yeah, you got you're the original member, obviously. So this is your your band, kind of. Not kind of, it is. Um, you've had I guess a couple members now been in the band for about five years, and then you just had a change, right? Yeah, yeah. We just got a new bass player. His name is Nick Shingelis. and I wasn't even going to try and pronounce it. Yeah, Shingelis is how you say it. And um, he's played in Job for a Cowboy and Cephalic Carnage, and he's a super, super sick musician. He's a great uh, bass player and cool guy, so we're all happy to have him. Um, and the other two guys that are with the band, I guess they both came in around 2010, is that right? Yeah, both of them joined in 2010, so they've been in for about five years, a little over. So uh, Good run with them? Yeah, it's great to be with them. It's, it's yeah, I've had a lot of lineup changes I guess over the years so some yeah it takes a really long time to find the right people to be in a band with people that are committed to touring um, not complete assholes are good at their instruments 
um, and just you know the the planets kind of have to align for that to happen. A lot of boxes to check off. Yeah, for sure. There, it's um, it's really hard to find dedicated members that are as down as you are and want to play the same kind of music. It's near impossible. So I'm stoked to have found uh, the right kind of people to surround myself with. Um, so new release 2016 sometime? Yeah, probably late 2016. All right, cool. Uh, I did want to just kind of go back to the early days. I guess you formed the band around 2004. Yeah. You were in high school at the time. Yep. So what was, uh, you probably, I don't know if you had an iPod back then, but what was, what were you listening to and what kind of were the things that were influenced you to form Havoc? In the early days, the things that inspired me to pick up a guitar and to start a band were Old Metallica, Megadeth, ACDC, Slayer, Testament, Exodus, Overkill, Iron Maiden, like, you know. Classic metal and a lot of the classic thrash bands, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Heavy metal is what made me fall in love with music in the first place. Since then, I broadened my horizons big time, but I would say, like, metal and punk rock and classic rock is what made me, like, you know, jump off of that cliff. But when you got started doing havoc stuff or whatever obviously you have a uh, kind of a thrash you know you're doing a thrash thing or whatever you know similar to a lot of those some of those bands you mentioned i yeah. think of testament death angel exodus um so that's kind of that's what you wanted to do right i guess you were thrash kind of really yeah yeah this band's definitely got like the thrash core to it but there's a lot of other flavors on the uh, external edges of things i mean this band is heavily influenced by jazz and music uh funk music classic rock punk rock hardcore Classical, like oh, I don't know if I already said classical, but you know we would take influence from a lot of different things, even weird shit like Devo and Oingo Boingo and Frank Zappa and stuff. Is there any other current, uh, maybe either thrash bands is what I'm going to ask, but even just in general metal bands today that you kind of you like or? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, all the bands that are on this tour are we're fans of. Um, as far as newer bands that, that influence our sound and that we're big fans of, I would definitely say Revocation is one, Psychosomatic is one, and uh, yeah, th there's a lot of really sick bands out there right now, but those are two of the big ones for me. Sweet. And uh, you're from Denver, the whole band's from Denver? I'm from Denver, Nick, our bass player, is from Denver, and the other guy's actually relocated from the East Coast. I had to import. <laughs> And uh, how's the scene in Denver today in general? Music scene, metal scene? Yeah, generally it's really, really strong. We've, we've got a lot of music venues there in town, and I know that um, anytime we're on tour with bands, they're always stoked about the Denver show coming up because it's almost always a really good show. It's uh, a booming city, and it's got a thriving music scene, I would say, for sure. Any difference now that uh, marijuana's been legalized in Colorado? or? Yeah, we're seeing yeah. a giant influx of uh, people moving there, you know. I, I think that has something to do with it. <laughs> Liberal laws on, uh, with that. Um, when you're on tour, you've been for De you grew up in Denver and everything? Yeah. Born and raised in Denver? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't born there, but I've lived there my whole conscious life, yeah. When you're out on tour, is there anything particular that you miss about Denver or something like you're like, oh... Food wise, or yeah, for sure. Some of the restaurants we we all love this place called Tokyo Joe's. That's kind of a Denver thing. And is it Japanese food, or it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's Japanese food, and it's really good and inexpensive and healthy. And um, other than that, I, we all miss the view of home. You know, we we get to look at the Rocky Mountains practically every day, and uh, yeah, it's really cool. the The Rocky Mountains are really beautiful and also I would say maybe the people the fact the marijuana is legal is really cool to many but uh, I also think that the people in Colorado are really laid back and it's uh, I, I feel really lucky to have grown up there so it's been a good scene all along I guess even when you were younger it was a good scene yeah for sure I mean back when I started going to shows I was in high school and I would go to DIY shows where it was BYOB there was you know 14 year old kids drinking whiskey and stuff I didn't used to drink back then, but just the fact that, um, you know, I, I was allowed to go and do that as long as I still went to school the next day. Um, you know, my mom didn't really care that I... Be semi-responsible, you are. Right. Yeah, yeah. She would let me go to any show I wanted to as long as I still woke up the next day and went to school and my grades didn't slide. I got to go and 
do a lot of stuff that other kids couldn't do. So I feel really lucky. All right. Uh, another question I'd like to ask, especially guitars. Any gear that you love or want to talk about? Guitars or amps? The guitars, yeah. I'd love to talk about them. There you go. I got some uh, custom shop Framus Warwick Flying Vs. Um, they built them for me this past year, and they're really beautiful. They sound really good. They play really nice. They balance perfectly. Um, it's the same company that makes Warwick basses, is Framus Guitars. And um, I, I'm very, very stoked to be a part of their company and try to blow up their name a little more. Cause you play them exclusively or...? Or live anyway? No, I'm playing them exclusively. They built me two, and they're exactly to my specs, and I couldn't ask for a cooler guitar. They're really, really awesome. My rig is sounding better than ever. I upgraded it completely, um, you know, kind of maxed out my rig and made it as cool as I possibly could. So I figured this is my job, you know, so I might as well upgrade my tools and uh, streamline everything. So you get to write those off in your taxes? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. It's Job, job function, right? Yeah, it's tools for work. But um, for an amp, I'm using the PV Triple X2 right now. Me and Reese are both using the Triple X2, and those things smoke. They've got um, you know passive clean channel and active distortion channels, and more gain than you could ever know what to do with. And the built-in noise gate, which is really, really ideal for you know how many stops, like really tight rests we have in our music. Uh, yeah, we both love those amps. Sweet. Um, one more question. Are you or is anybody in the band a vegetarian? Vegetarian, yeah. Our bass player is. Seems to be a lot of vegetarians in the metal community. Yeah. I started used to ask people about their favorite hamburgers, and I was always getting, well, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. So. Yeah, I think it's not necessarily a bad idea to, no, it's to shy away from some meat when you're on the road because it's very easy to eat like garbage on tour. Yeah, McDonald's or Burger King. Yeah, McDonald's is a no-go. It's, uh, you pay for it later. I mean, it's hot. I can't eat it anymore. Yeah, it's hot and it tastes kind of good, but, uh, you don't feel good later. It's not real food, you know? There's no, uh, substance or nutrition. All right. Uh, anything else you want to uh, add to, uh, Capital Cast TV people that might be watching? Uh, yeah. Check them out on tour coming up. Yeah, check us out on tour coming up. And to anyone who has checked us out on tour or come to a show or, you know, bought CDs or T-shirts. Thank you very much, because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. And uh, we love what we do, and we're going to keep doing it as long as people are down to come out and support. So thank you very much. Hello, human scum! This is Odorous Sharungus commanding you to continue watching Capital Chaos. They support guar and anal rape and all kinds of wonderful things.